Hello, what is up? My name is Abu, and this is going to be an editing workflow video. Because a few of my friends wanted one. And by a few, I mean like three of you guys. So, here we go. Load up Lightroom. If you don't want to pay for Lightroom, there's a bunch of free stuff available. I'll try to put some links in the description. Step one, you gotta import the goods. Now that you have the goods imported, it's editing time. I'm gonna go with picture number two. I like to start with lens corrections, because there's always something wrong with your lenses formula, and you can fix its bullshit right here with two simple clicks. If Lightroom does a bad job automatically selecting your lenses profile, you can manually select it from the drop down menus. Lens corrections done. Next, transform panel. Not everyone's straight, and that's okay. And obviously, I'm talking about the lines in your pictures. Sometimes they're crooked, sometimes they're off axis. And again, Lightroom does a good job automatically straightening your lines if you want to. Select one of the presets. I tend to go with auto. Another way to strain your lines is to go to the crop overlay tool, select the straining tool, select the line like your horizon, and it will strain it. Transform, done. Cleanup time. Spot removal tool, or as I like to call it, I call it the spot removal tool. There's some sensor dust on this picture. You just go in, make sure your opacity is at 100, and just click away your problems. Now for the big distracting railing on the bottom left. There's two ways to handle the situation. We can either crop it out and lose some of the buildings in the back, or we can stick with a spot removal tool and paint over it and hope for the best. I think it did a pretty good job. Cleanup done. Now, nah, nobody likes to be basic, so it's time for the basics panel. Want to start your black and white journey? You can do that here. You can select a profile from the drop down menu. I like standard because I'm a pretty simple guy. Preferring into white balance, give me a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior Raw. Since my camera's auto white balance did a horrible job selecting color values, I can come in during post and correct them. It makes a huge difference. This represents the colors more accurately, like what my eyes would be seeing when I took this picture. If you want warmer tones, slide the slider to the right. If you want colder tones, slide the slider to the left. If that's not enough, you can come into the tint. Lefts are green and right is magenta. If you want to add or take away artificial exposure, you can do that with the slider. For contrast, if you want to make your lights and darks more distinguishable, slide it to the right. If you want to make them less distinguishable, slide it to the left. To talk about the next four settings, I'm actually going to go to a different picture. For this picture, the sky is a little blown out, but the details are still recoverable. So as I slide the highlights down, you'll see some of the sky come back to me. Likewise, some of the darker areas need more detail, like under these trees. If I slide the shadows up, some of the detail will be recovered. Now continuing on in that fashion, we can lower the whites and erase the blacks. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. There are some dark parts under this bridge. So again, I'll raise the shadows. A tip for whites and blacks. If you hold Alt on your keyboard, or whatever the Mac equivalent is, if you raise the slider, you'll see the point at which the whites get overexposed. Don't do that. Similarly for the blacks. If you lower it, you'll see where the darks get too dark. Also, don't do that. If you want to soften the image, you can slide the clarity down. If you want to add more details, you can slide it up. Note, too high of a clarity looks very silly. 
there is no haze in this photograph, so we're not going to touch the dehaze tool. Finally, for the basics panel, we have vibrance and saturation. Vibrance affects the intensity of the colors in the midtones, while saturation affects all of it. I don't like using these sliders because my mom told me not to, but I'll show you guys how it looks if you slide vibrance to the left and vibrance to the right. And likewise for saturation and to the right. You can change saturation later on when we get to the HSL color. But for now, basics done. Tone curve time. It's this thing that looks like math. And I would talk more about this, but the video would get very long. So for now, I'll just add medium contrast and tone curve done. HSL slash color. This is where you can affect the hue, saturation, and luminance of specific colors in your photograph. Starting with hue. Hue affects how certain colors look. For example, if you want your yellows to be more orange, you'll go to your yellows and slide to the orange. A more noticeable example, the purple in this picture, can be changed to look more bluish if you slide it to the left. Saturation. I've already talked about saturation, but you can affect the saturation of specific colors. So let's say you wanted to take out all the blue in this picture. You would come to the blue, slide it all to the left. Luminance. This is where you can make your certain colors brighter or darker. Split toning time. This is where you can add tones to the highlights and the shadows of your pictures. For an example, if you want to add warm tones to your highlights, you can come in and select a warm color and affect the saturation on it. This is very warm. I think I'll add a hint of warm. You can do the same with shadows. If you want to add cooler tones to your shadows, select a cool color and affect the saturation on it. Split toning done. Details time. Here, you can affect the sharpening of your picture by adding to the amount. But note, the more you add, the more noise might appear in your picture. If you still want to add sharpening but reduce the amount of noise added, you can hold Alt again on the masking part and slide it to the right. Anything in black will be unaffected and anything in white will be affected by sharpening. I just want the edges of my objects in the pictures to be sharpened, so now I can freely add sharpening and reduce the amount of noise added. If you shot with a high ISO or in poor lighting conditions, there might be noise in your picture. You can come here and adjust the limits to reduce the noise. There's not that much noise in my picture, so I will leave it unchanged. Details done. Effects time. This is where I come to add some vignetting to my picture. If you want to add a dark vignette to the edges of your picture, to make the viewer's eyes focus on the picture, slide this to the left. Just a little bit should do it. A couple more settings. A graduated filter. Sometimes I like to add these to make the sky darker. So select graduated filter. You can do some burning. And slide it down from the top. To see what it did. Another filter. The radial filter. I would like to lighten the Brooklyn Bridge a little, because it seems a little dark. For the basis of this tutorial, I'm done editing. I would definitely spend more time on this and affect more settings, but the video would be way too long. Just to show you guys the before and after the difference editing makes, you can see how important it is. So now get out there and take some pictures. It's very cheesy.